Okay, welcome to Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret. We're in the book of Joshua, Joshua chapter 10, verse 15. Get your Bible if you can, open it up to Joshua chapter 10. We'll begin in just a minute. Do want to remind you that the Scripture Verse by Verse website is found at the Bible versebyverse.com. There you can study all of God's Word with me using my audio Bible messages. Choose from four complete series going through the whole Bible verse by verse. Choose, click, and listen. Study God's Word at your pace, at your convenience, with me using my audio Bible messages. Again, that is at the Bible versebyverse.com. And Father, we pray that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, Joshua chapter 10, verse 15. And Joshua returned, and all Israel with him, unto the camp to Gilgal. And if you were with us last time, you know what a remarkable day it was. What a day it had been. What a comeback for the Israelites after the AI fiasco. They're back on track with God right now. Things are going great. Been a very productive day for the Lord and as a result for God's people. Verse 16. But these five kings fled and hid themselves in a cave at Mecca. Five kings from the five nations that had been foolish enough to gang up, gang up on God's people are now hiding in cave in a cave. Verse seventeen, and it was told Joshua, saying, "The five kings are found hidden in a cave at Mecca." And Joshua said, "Roll." great stones upon the mouth of the cave, and set men by it to guard them. The five kings thought that they were safe in this cave, but this refuge of theirs became their tomb. God's enemies are not safe. God's enemies are never safe, no matter how safe they may feel. 19. And stay ye not there, But pursue after your enemies, and smite the rear of them. Permit them not to enter into their cities, for the Lord your God hath delivered them into your hand. The enemy belongs to Israel, but Israel must first pursue them. We saw this last time. They had to march all night. God gave, promised them the victory. The victory was sure, but they had to march all night, see? Always got to put in effort. This idea that just let go, do absolutely nothing, and allow God to do it all, that's not biblical. We work as if it all depends on us, and we pray and we trust God as if it all depends on Him. And again, the enemy belongs to Israel. Victory is promised, but Israel still must pursue them. If they sit back and just twiddle their thumbs and wait for the enemy to be dropped into their lap, it's not going to happen. The only way Israel loses this battle is if they do absolutely nothing. Verse 20. And it came to pass when Joshua and the children of Israel had ceased slaying them with a very great slaughter till they were consumed, that the rest who remained of them entered into fortified cities. So Israel slayed them with a very great slaughter. And since the enemies of God would not repent, that's the way it had to be. God is not mild-mannered toward evil, as some people think today. He takes a hard line when it comes to opposing evil. And that's the way we're supposed to be, too, when it comes to any evil inside of us. We are to take a hard line and not tolerate it because that's how God feels. Don't mess with evil. Don't mess with sin. Don't tolerate with it. Don't justify it. 
repent of it. If it's forbidden in the Bible, we shouldn't be doing it, and we should take a hard line against it. 21. And all the people returned to the camp to Joshua at Makeda in peace. None moved his tongue against any of the children of Israel. The job is done, and no one criticized Israel and their armies for how they did it either. If anyone didn't like the methods Israel used to defeat their enemies, they didn't say anything about it. Because they knew that God was working through Israel, they didn't dare say anything. 22. Then said Joshua, Open the mouth of the cave, and bring out those five kings unto me out of the cave. So Joshua is about to take care of some unfinished business involving these kings. Verse 23. And they did so, and brought forth those five kings unto him out of the cave, the king of Jerusalem, the king of Hebron, the king of Jarmuth, the king of Lachish, and the king of Eglon. These are the five kings that conspired against the nation Israel and against Almighty God. I have never in my life had anyone put their foot on my neck. But notice verse 24. And it came to pass when they brought out those kings unto Joshua that Joshua called for all the men of Israel and said unto the captains of the men of war who went with him, Come near, put your feet upon the necks of these kings. And they came near and put their feet upon the necks of them. Like I said, I have never had. I mean, I have been in fights. I have been in fist fights. I have, I have been on the ground uh, going up against three people, three men, and I have been held down and been kicked in the face with the third person's boot. I have experienced a lot of stuff like that back in my young and foolish days before I was saved, but I have never in my life had anyone put their foot on my neck. And the thought of it drives me crazy. I'd rather get kicked in the head with a boot than have somebody put their foot on my neck. But this is symbolic of the fact that evil people will not always have a free will. They will not always have a free will. There will come a time when God will put his foot on their neck and he will say, that's enough. It's all over. 25. And Joshua said unto them, Fear not, nor be dismayed. Be strong and of good courage, for thus shall the Lord do to all your enemies against whom ye fight. The war is not over yet, but Joshua says, Israel, there's no need to fear because take a good look at what you're doing right now. Your foot is on the neck of these five kings. The Almighty will put his foot on the neck of all your enemies before this thing is done. 26. And afterwards Joshua smote them and slew them and hanged them on five trees. And they were hanging upon the trees until the evening. A gruesome end to God's enemies, I would say. You say, I thought God was love. Why would God sanction something like this? Because he is love. And he loves us enough to hate whatever might hurt us, physically or spiritually. This is a very loving thing that God did for his people, destroying these five kings who refused to repent, left very loving. They'll, they won't be a thorn in the side of his people anymore. 27. And it came to pass at the time of the going down of the sun that Joshua commanded, and they took them down from the trees and cast them into the cave in which they had hidden and laid great stones in the cave's mouth, which remained unto this very day. The large stones against the cave were there to make sure that those kings were not removed and given a decent burial. 
the eternally cursed of God, do not deserve any honor. Now, verses 28 through 43 list the conquests of Joshua over the southern portion of the Holy Land. So we're, we're just not going to read all those verses, but let's go to chapter 11, verse 1. And it came to pass when Jabin, king of Hazor, had heard those kings, that he sent to Jobab, king of Madon, and to the king of Shimron, and to the king of Ashaph. So the things referred to here in verse 1 refers to the defeat of the central and southern portions of the Holy Land of Israel. Jabin heard about that, heard how God and Israel were wiping the floor with these nations in the land of Canaan, and Jabin is worried because he knows God has his sights fixed on him. Jabin is from the north section, which is the only part that God and Israel have not gone after yet. So look at 1 through 3. And it came to pass, when Jabin king of Hazor had heard those things, that he sent to Jobab king of Madon, and to the king of Shimron, and to the king of Asaph, and to the kings that were on the north of the mountains, and of the Arabah, south of Chinneroth, and in the Shephelah, and in the borders of Dor on the west, and to the Canaanite on the east and on the west, and to the Amorite and the Hittite and the Perizzite and the Jebusite in the mountains, and to the Hivite under Hermon in the land of Mizpah. So these nations that are listed here were all in the north. They were all in the north. And believe me, if there had been civil defense sirens in those days, they would have all been blasting because they know that they are next on God's hit list. Jabin is trying to put together a last-minute coalition that can come against Israel and God. Verse 4, And they went out, they and all their hosts with them, many people, even as the sand that is upon the seashore in, in multitude, with horses and chariots very many. And when all these kings were met together, they came and encamped together at the waters of Miram to fight against Israel. A historian has written that this coalition had 300,000 infantry troops. 300,000. Plus others on horses and chariots. This is probably the biggest force that Israel had ever run up against. And I know Joshua was a man of faith, but it's still hard not to think about the an opponent that large, don't you think? Well, look at verse 6. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Be not afraid because of them, for tomorrow about this time will I deliver them up all slain before Israel. Thou shalt hamstring their horses and burn their chariots with fire. Always good to get a word from God when you're in a situation like, like this. You know, God knew that Joshua was afraid, I'm sure. That's why he said, be not afraid. But instead of rebuking him for his fear, he encourages him with a promise. And of course, Joshua does not have to believe God's promise if he doesn't want to. But whether he believes it or not, it's going to come to pass. They will defeat the enemy. God's word is true, whether we believe it or not. It's just that if we don't believe it, we worry ourselves sick for absolutely no reason at all. We'll stop there. We'll see this big battle next time. Make sure you, you join me. In the meantime, of course, you can study all of God's worth with me verse by verse using my audio Bible messages at thebibleversebyverse.com. Choose, click, 
and listen from four complete series going through the whole Bible verse by verse. To be a part of Scripture verse by verse, pray for me and pray for God's Word. And when you take a break from studying at thebibleversebyverse.com, go to the front page, click the donate button, and prayerfully give as the Lord may lead. Those are some ways that you can be a part of Scripture verse by verse. You know this ministry, I have never watered down the Word of God, never, not one single verse. And I've always taught the whole counsel of God, Genesis through Revelation, since I began it 36 years ago. You can count on this ministry being faithful to God's Word. So, let's stand together and get out God's Word. Until next time, Michael Moret for Scripture, verse by verse. So long, everyone.